Welcome back to .NET Rocks. This is Carl Franklin. And this is Richard Campbell. Happy New Year, buddy. Happy New Year to you too, friend. There we go. First show of 2019. First show of 2019. We have some uh, changes this year. Yeah, well, it's time, isn't it? It's time. We are officially doing away with the $5,000 giveaway. Yeah, so that was our last one. Who knew? Yeah. It was fun. And uh, we still want you to join the fan club because, you know, you get notifications from us, newsletters yeah. and all that stuff. And when we have prizes to give away from our uh, our sponsors, we give them to you. Yep. And the reasons are, you know, advertising's been hard and our expenses are up and we've started a Patreon but don't have nearly enough to cover our expenses and... Uh, that's kind of why we started it. We could kind of see the handwriting on the wall. But, you know, who knows? Maybe sometime in 2019, some sponsors might jump in here and save our butts and allow us to uh, do that giveaway again. So until then, we're just going to talk. And two days a week for now, maybe go down to one day a week if we have to. Yeah, we have to look at that. Yeah. It'll still be the same .NET Rocks goodness just once a week. Yeah, it's just the realities of doing a podcast, right? No mm -hmm. big deal. In 2019. Yeah, but we're still here, and uh, Beth and John are here, and got some good news about uh, the .NET Foundation and all of that stuff. But first, let's roll the crazy music. <laughs> all right, dude, what do you got? Hey, you know, you and I are both regional directors. We are. So you would think... The website rd.com would be for regional directors, but it's actually for uh, Reader's Digest. Well, let's be honest. Reader's Digest has been around longer than the RD program. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But I mean, talk about a domain, huh? RD. Yeah, no kidding. That was smart of them. Well, the reason I bring it up is because I'm actually front and center on rd.com. Uh, wow. At least now in December. I'm not sure what's going to happen next month, but... Yeah, they did an article on Dr. Jason Fung, and he's a, a doctor who has reversed diabetes in his patients using intermittent fasting. That's and, a Canadian uh, doctor, you might mention. Yeah, he's from Toronto, <laughs> eh? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant guy. I know him very well and uh, work with him and his team on a few things. And, and I'm basically one of the success stories. And the first picture you see when you go to 1611.pwop.me. And for those who don't know, yeah, I reversed diabetes, lost about 80 pounds, they say 70, using a ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting, and even some extended fasting every once in a while. Turns out that's a good thing for you. So, And they also uh, made a link to Two Keto Dudes, my other podcast. Cool. It's awesome, dude. Yeah, so I'm very proud of that, and I wanted to share. That's, that's a cool one. I love it. So who's talking to us today, Richard? Grabbed a comment off a show 1377, which is Elite Speak, I think, which was the show we did with Beth talking about the marketing of .NET back in November of 2016. So that's a little while ago. A little while ago, yeah. But there's a bunch of good comments here, and it's actually that it's been a little while that this comment is especially relevant today. You'll love mm. this. It's from Tre Trevor Dykstra, who says, this was a great show. I'm really excited about the ability to develop .NET apps across Windows and Linux platforms, mm -hmm. which if you think in 2016, that was the beginning of .NET Core. Right. Microsoft has really transformed from a single platform company slash Windows to a more agile company with a cross-platform focus. Oh, yeah. Dude, it's 2019. You should see it now. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> awesome. <laughs> But, you know, considering the .NET Foundation and everything we're talking about today, I thought it was a very prescient comment from two years ago. Yeah, absolutely. So, Trevor, thank you so much for your comment. A copy of Music to Code Buy is on its way to you. And if you'd like a copy of Music to Code Buy, write a comment on the website at .netrocks.com or via Facebook. We publish every show there. And if you comment on Facebook and we read it on the show, we'll send you a copy of Music to Code Buy. And definitely follow us on Twitter. I'm at Carl Franklin. He's at Rich Campbell. Send us a tweet. Send us a tweet and make sure it's prescient, eh? Ooh, nice. I'm going to drag out your full Canadians there. That's it. Okay. All right. Let's bring on our guests. I'm very excited to have John and Beth. 
Uh, John Galloway is the executive director of the .NET Foundation. He's been a professional developer since the late 90s, spending most of that time on ASP.NET. He's been at Microsoft for seven years now, speaking and teaching at worldwide events, Microsoft Virtual Academy courses, writing training kits, and helping to build conference keynote demos. He's one of the hosts of the Herding Code podcast and has written some books about ASP.NET MVC. And he saw a pretty big spider on his desk yesterday, but hasn't seen it since. So he's a little on edge right now. (laughs) It's all true. Yeah. (laughs) Beth Massey, of course, uh, is the product marketing manager for .NET Platform and Languages, C Sharp, F Sharp, VB. She's a longtime community champion and a .NET Foundation officer. She helps developers build amazing things. Follow her on Twitter and GitHub at Beth Massey. That's M-A-S-S-I. Welcome, Beth. Welcome, John. Hey, guys. Hey. Thanks for having us. Now watch out for that spider. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a field spider. I think it's going to be okay. But okay. if I scream, you'll know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at all your old MVC books, and they're down to like six bucks, eight bucks. <laughs> you know, they're, they're, I've seen one. There's a Chinese version of one of them, and I'm like, yeah. been watching it on a few things. I, I'm, I may pick it up someday. Well, it is, and it's fifty bucks. So I'm like going along with like, that. for fifty ones. bucks. What's that about? Oh, it's in it's in Korean, I think. Mm. So there you go. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, I t- try writing a book with a version of VB in the title. So yeah. you know, MVC books were quite a grind because they were. There was a new one out all the time, and now with ASP.NET Core, it's even accelerated. It's like forget it. It's pretty hard to write a, a an actual printed book these days. Yeah. Yeah, my my two books that I wrote for John Wiley and Sons were VB40 Internet Programming followed by VB60 Internet Programming and the shelf life was abysmal. Oh, that's true of all tech books really. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, there are a lot of books where you can cover these general topics, but uh, yeah, I suppose you're right. I mean, once it's in print, it's automatically kind of uh, the time clock is ticking. I mean, well, especially with like how fast things release these days, um, like, you know, back, you know, in the 80s and 90s, you know, you have a language in a compiler that lasted 10 years, you know, but nowadays that's not true. Yeah. Technology moves too fast, I think, you know, for stuff. I mean, I think you probably could write a book on like programming fundamentals that would last a long time. But like if you're talking about higher level text, that's just that's yeah. not worth it. Some wise man told me one, I don't know, I was probably in my 20s, never, ever write a book. Mm, yeah. <laughs> just, especially if you're thinking you're going to make money. <laughs> so. Well, you, the, the one trade-off is it really does force you to learn something. Yeah, you do learn stuff by putting together a book. I mean, <laughs> you, you really, w- when something is going off to the printers and they're like, this is your last, and also the editors, the editors like, up to my writing level quite a bit because everything I'd, I'd be like, yeah, this is good. And I get it back and tons of red lines. And you're like, Oh boy. <laughs> you know? Dude, and I'm really, I'm really enjoying both of you making fun of writing books while I'm, this is the year I'm supposed to finish history <laughs> of .NET, Right. So well, but that, this is a historical book. book though, right? so I agree. I, I was that, just going to say that. I mean, there's going to be code complete. There's going to be the patterns books, the gang of four and Richard's book on the history of .NET, Right. That's a timeless Um, thing, I think. That's a story. It's not like training. You know, it's a story. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. I'm just trying to get it to the place where it doesn't suck. That's all I'm trying to do. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I guess we should talk about the .NET Foundation, huh? (laughs) Sure. Let's do it. Who's first? Oh, let me start. And then Beth will correct me as she does. (laughs) (laughs) So so the the .NET Foundation has been around since 2014, and... Beth was actually involved with it a while before I was, way back in the beginning. But the the goal of the .NET Foundation is to support the .NET open source ecosystem. You know, .NET was started by Microsoft, but it's it's open source. And and now for a lot of our repos, we're seeing like 70, 80% of our contributions are external to Microsoft. It really is an open source um, uh, not just, you know, project, but family of projects. And also a lot of projects contributed completely by community um, that are supported by .NET Foundation. So what we've announced at Connect is that we're doing two things. One is we're 
expanding to an open membership system. And this is inspired by a lot of other foundations. We looked at tons of foundations. Um, mm. I've, I've been the executive director for almost two years now. And this was actually something that Martin Woodward, who was in the executive director role before me, he had been working on this. So this has been in the works for a while. Mm. Uh, we looked at what a lot of open source foundations do. And some of the some of the models that we really liked, uh, we looked especially like GNOME Foundation, also F Sharp Foundation, uh, allow um, community members to be uh, allow open source contributors to become members, and that allows them to run for a board seat and to vote in the elections. Um, and so it's, you know, as opposed to some foundations are really kind of more of a pay to play model and you have these, you know, large companies contributing a million dollars and they get a board seat. And really what we want to do is have more of a community run thing. So, right. Yeah. So, so that's really the, the big first thing we're announcing is we're expanding from three to seven board seats and anyone that's contributed to a .NET foundation project can both uh, vote in the elections and run for the elections. Um, and only one, we're, we're having one elect, one board seat is appointed by Microsoft and the rest are all voted for by the community. Right. So that's, cool. that's kind of the first big thing. Okay. Awesome. I'm trying to imagine the kind of the decision making that the board is going to be uh, committed to. Like what, what's the job? Oh, that's, a, yeah, that's a great question. So, I mean, the .NET Foundation, like it is kind of a, um, I can tell you what we've done in the past, mm -hmm. but part of what we're excited about is that the board is given this mandate of supporting the open source .NET ecosystem, and they can kind of take this and run with it in some ways that, you know, myself and, and Beth and, you know, the, the kind of group we've had so far, some things we may not have even thought of, mm -hmm. but some things that, that we've done in the past, one is we support a lot of open source .NET projects. So these are, of course, like Core CLR and Core FX and ASP.NET and, you know, those those kind of ones that were contributed by Microsoft. And then also some, some important uh, projects that are developed by the community and also donated to the .NET Foundation. So those include uh, a recent one that joined was JSON.NET, you know, the yeah. largest uh, NuGet package, you know, by far. Um, and then, you know, also... Um, uh, you know, like auto mapper. I mean, there's just tons of them. There's, yeah. uh, there's dozens. So one big thing is we support these projects and, you know, in the past that's been like IP legal, um, contributing to things like hosting and certificates and signing servers and build servers and that kind of stuff. But we'd love to do more. I think there's more, we would love to accelerate bringing projects on and then also what we can do to support those projects. So what um, does it mean exactly when you support a project? I know that, um, you know, it's it's not like you shepherd the project. It's not like you are the guys that are handling pull requests and all that. But it's more like a curation, right? It's kind of curation and also a little bit more like a back office support kind of thing. So mm -hmm. there, are some, there are some foundations that are really kind of get in and kind of are very picky. <sighs> They're very selective. They're like, we'll have just one, you know, web server framework and we'll have just one of this and we're going to, you know, and, and really there are several things we've got where there's, there's multiple uh, different things that are in the same kind of similar space. Um, so, so we don't try and play favorites completely. You know, we try and pick projects that are important to the community. And then with that, it's more kind of a, you know, we're behind the scenes supporting them. So yeah. we're not trying to tell people what to do. We're instead trying to, you know, say, for instance, X unit, say they need a new SSL cert, say they need um, some, you know, say uh, we've had projects recently where someone, you know, had some GDPR questions and needed legal advice. So, you know, we, we, ha we support them with legal services. That's great. What we think of is there's these projects where you've got just a few developers, even on some really important projects, a lot of them have just a few developers and they're working hard and they have limited time and limited money and limited, right. you know, l limited everything. And we want them to spend that time on the project doing what they love. We don't want them to have to spend that time, you know, scrambling around setting up support servers and, yeah. and, you know, de dealing with all the kind of like 
annoying stuff, you know, and we want to be able to help them get the word out and marketing and, you know, all that stuff. It's also kind of an endorsement, right? Like, uh, just by being in the .NET Foundation, it's almost like Microsoft is saying, hey, we think this project is important, so much so that we're going to support it. It is. I think that that's really super important to the projects. I mean, all of the infrastructure and the things that they need, like John's talking about, is very per project. You know, like some projects need help in more areas than others um, in that front. I think definitely the fact that you, know, you kind of mentioned Curate, it's more than Curate. It's more, it's it's the center of gravity for all of .NET open source. It really is. It is about like, taking all of these projects and making sure that there's some longevity to them. Um, and, you know, like we were saying in the beginning, you know, Donut is bigger than just Microsoft and each individual project is bigger than even the contributors. Uh, right. Because like, this is about like sustaining these projects, um, you know, for the future. Uh, I think that, you know, there's a, there's a debate whether or not, you know, having, you know, multiple of the same projects in the foundation and do they compete and, you know, like, well, you know, that we're taking that approach versus like, say, you know, Apache foundation, which says, no, we have one of these and one of these and one of these that fill gaps. I think honestly, as we kind of, you know, grow up and go, you know, take the foundation further, uh, we really will need to look at the board. We'll really need to look at what are the gaps that we still have in the open source ecosystem and um, like br not just bring in, because if you think about it, .NET open source existed before the foundation, right? So we were about getting these projects together and creating that center of gravity. Now, as we keep, as we move forward, we're going to, we're going to end up with, you know, gaps in the, in, in our technology stack, because there's going to be some new X, Y, Z, that everybody is like doing now like if you looked at big data and ai like in, in the past right we're going to start filling those gaps with you know projects that are going to be in the foundation you, you'll see that with ml.net actually recently mm. in the ai space for instance that's in the foundation you'll see the foundation taking off it's very it's kind of a back seat but it really is like the engine that drives that car right it's it's trying to help help uh, forward the platform and the ecosystem together yeah, you know, that's really huge. What Beth said there is this whole opportunity to like look strategically at things and find gaps and find synergies and all that kind of, you know, the, the, um, the things that, that you can do kind of stepping back. There's, there's all these projects and all of them, like, like I said, they're just time constrained and they're all, you know, handling pull requests and all that kind of stuff. It's great to be able to say like, you know what, this project could benefit from this or all these projects group together could, you know, like that kind of bigger picture stuff. So there, there really is that. And like Beth said, you know, pulling in, um, looking for, for gaps, looking for, Hey, this project's, you know, maybe needs some help and, you know, try and get some community members to jump in or, you know, yeah. uh, you know, there's also things like potentially, uh, looking at something and saying like, Hey, could we pay a vendor to help write some docs for this thing? Wow. Or, you know, that kind yeah, of stuff. That's so. cool. Hey guys, hold that thought right there while we take a moment for this very important message. Hey, Carl here to say that music to code by is now an app called music to flow by. Now you can listen to the tracks on your phone with offline capability. The first three tracks are free and the entire catalog is available by subscription with a new track arriving every month. Just go to musictoflowby.com for all the links. And we're back. It's .NET Rocks. I'm Carl Franklin. That's Richard Campbell. That was John Galloway. And that other voice there is Beth Massey. And we're talking about the .NET Foundation. 25,000 contributors. Wow. Actually, we just updated that number. Yeah, it's this is one of those things we have to keep updating those. <laughs> that was something we worked on for Connect, actually. So we uh, we have an open source programs office, just like most large companies do, and, and within Microsoft, and they do a lot of stuff for like you know code scanning and that kind of stuff, and making sure we're like internally across Microsoft doing open source right, quote unquote. Mm. Well, they also collect. They also have you know, GitHub has um, like all the data right that is open. Right. And so we take we mined a lot of that data. We took a look at um, the the projects that make up the platform, just the platform. So like Mono, .NET Core, ASP.NET. We looked at those projects and we're at like just community contributions where it's over 61,000 now since the, since those started. So wow. th that 25,000 number is a couple years old. Actually, we need to update that on the website. Um, 
But mm-hmm. yeah, it's incredible to see that. And you know, if you also include Microsoft employees, it's just in, it's just insane. So, right. um, very active, very very active platform. Now, I'm trying to get my head around what you guys are talking about before the break with this whole if we see a gap. So you see a gap, something you know missing. Uh, what ha- then? Like, what would you do about it? Yeah. Well, and again, this is something where I'm excited about having community. Um, community board members coming in because mm-hmm. a lot of the time there's there's discussions on Twitter where people will say you know what the .NET Foundation should do this or should do that and you know I'll say yeah that sounds great um, I'm kind of booked through the next six months but you know so <laughs> but on the other hand if we have like a large a board of seven active community members and we've got other people like that scales a lot better and those people can also help involve other people so. That that's one thing, um, and then you know what could we do if we see a gap? One is you know looking for maybe a small project or a project that's had limited contributors and trying to you know trying to uh, catalyze that, trying to get that you know moving faster, bring in people, um, bring in you know with uh, like marketing the project or that kind of thing. It also raises awareness to. Microsoft employees as well. There is a lot of research projects that are written in C sharp that are coming into the foundation that are filling some gaps. So just just wanted to also say it's not it's about the community. And when we talk when we say community, it's about like the engineers within Microsoft as well. It is part of the community. Well, and I do appreciate the sentiment that you see a gap and you think somebody's already filled this. They just aren't as visible as they should be. Let's go find right. it rather than let's go make a new thing. Exactly. Exactly. And a lot of the time there are things also where it's like, you know, hey, maybe there's something that a uh, company, you know, that's that's been built internal to an enterprise and it's mature. And hey, why not open source that? And we we have things like that where people will ping us and say, hey, we've built this amazing, you know, XSL parser or whatever could could. and, And so that's also a thing. It's just kind of getting the word out. If you've built an amazing XSL parser, just what's that? (laughs) <laughs> well, I'm just saying. Well, I mean, a good example is Pivotal, Steel Toe, right? They they right. came in and have That's been great. filling like microservice patterns, right, on the .NET platform. They're basically spring for for .NET. That's Steel Toe. So that that we saw a gap. They came on last year, I think. So that we saw as a gap, and and they're filling that there. So that's a good example of that. Yeah, and and you know, it's great you bring Pivotal and Steel Toe up because they. Um, they have been filling that with code, also with patterns. They've, they recently published a large ebook. And then that kind of segues into the other announcement we made, which is expanding from our technical steering group to a corporate sponsor program. And, and uh, Pivotal was one of the new corporate sponsors that joined. So in addition to our TSG before, our technical steering group, which is Red Hat, JetBrains, Google, Unity, uh, Microsoft, and Samsung, we also added we've we've expanded that to a corporate sponsor program, and uh, our launch partners for that were Pivotal, Progress, Telerik, and Insight. Cool. So yeah, and you know that's also part of the thing of like exp- of making um, the .NET Foundation like very clearly more than just Microsoft. Like it's the full support of Microsoft and a lot of other companies that you know depend on and and are deeply part of the .NET ecosystem right so and i really like that group that joined partly because it just shows this kind of diversity like pivotal is you know platform and microservices progress telerik is a tools vendor and insight is a like a consulting systems integrator right so so previously the technical steering group like was mostly focused on people that are going to be shipping a dot net kind of thing, you know, (laughs) whereas, uh, and so, you know, technical steering group kind of sounded about right. They need to be in there like debating how the runtime's built and stuff. Whereas corporate sponsor, these are companies that if .NET gets bigger, that benefits them as a company. Like, so uh, we're hoping to see that continue to grow. And we already have some other companies, you know, talking to us about joining as well. So, We'd love to see that kind of get bigger too, and that's that's good for a lot of reasons. But one that I think is is big is people care about things they've spent money on. Mm-hmm. I know I do, you know, yep. and and so we'd love to see you know deep participation and like 
you know, we'd love to see these companies getting involved and saying, you know what, I want .NET to do this, or can you do this, you know, and really kind of pushing .NET forward because, you know, putting their mouth where their money is. There is an interesting balance here between open source free software and the money it takes to actually manage and maintain that software. The foundation, in my mind, and you as the executive director probably knows it more than anything, not a lot of money there. Like, wh- how is that going to change? Because you're sounding like there's a h- much higher level of activity going to come from the foundation. Mm. Yeah, well, so this is already something where, so again, there's all these different models of of corporate sponsorship. Mm-hmm. And some some foundations are like, hey, give us a million bucks and, you know, put your logo on this and that. So we've gone with kind of a, uh, you know, relatively inexpensive dues for that. But we've got three levels. We've got large company, which is over 10 million in revenue, 50,000 annually, and then small right. company, 25,000 annually. And, and then a, a small company is 10,000 annually. Okay. So we'd love, we'd love to see a mix of those. Yeah. But al- already you talk about, you know, four or five companies joining and you're, you're doubling, tripling our budget from, you know, from the mm. past few years. Sure. You know, looking also at other, Companies like or uh, foundations like Gnome Foundation, they've got several corporate sponsors on there. Um, so this is really something where I could see this scaling up quite a bit. Yeah, and we certainly hope this will help. Yeah, I think there's a lot we can do. We have a we're we have a pretty slim budget, and we get a lot of stuff done as there is right now. Uh, and so just having that, yeah, extra money coming in from these sponsors not just for like the services that we already provide but to to really think outside the box how can we how can we say you know create more you know opportunities for speakers at meetups to travel or you know like the, how can we forward some of the just the ecosystem activities as well um, yeah. you know can, can we do like right now we I mean john did a great job of like creating a newsletter this year and getting everybody to like you know announce things and to create some standard communications well how can we take that you know marketing quote unquote to the next level as you know i'm, I'm in marketing so i think a lot about how do we raise awareness and perception of foundation, but at the same time, help our community do better. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that's going to help. Echoes of what Ineta did come to mind, right? In the early days. Uh, of absolutely. Dotnet. And, you know, I mean, Ineta, uh, there's a, a huge amount of positive stuff. I mean, Ineta and Ineta events and speakers, you know, hugely inf- influenced me as I was starting out in .NET. And um, we'd love to see that sort of spirit continue. Um, But what's great to have it like not directly tied to a marketing group and a marketing budget at Microsoft. What if that's, you know, supported by an industry wide thing where multiple companies are chipping in multiple, you know, and, and are excited about it. Um, So, and like Beth said, there's opportunities for speaker grants for things like, you know, entire events uh, like code camps or, or speaker tours, Mm. Um, you know, and then also things like, focus things on, you know, workshops by open source leaders, you know, teaching people, here's how to contribute to open source, you know, (laughs) and, you know, uh, I mean, so, and then we've talked about things too, like where we've had .NET Conf as an in person, or I mean, as a virtual event, what if we actually had some like in-person events and meetups um, that are kind of larger than just, you know, a meetup. Maybe it's a full day or a couple of days. Sure. Uh, Also, meetup.com requires an annual fee or something, doesn't it? I mean, just for some people who want to start meetups in their area. It does. We've been supporting a meetup pro group that we announced at .NET Conf 2017, and it keeps getting bigger. Um, So we're currently at 245 groups. Wow. uh, yeah, 51 countries worldwide. And so that is already part of our budget is we pay all those uh, meetup fees and we've created a meetup pro group so that we can organize and search through them and can and can send uh, content out to all of them. For instance, after .NET Conf this year, we sent out all the slide decks and we helped them organize in-person events. Um, yeah, we, we had like I, over 150 I forget. of them, I think, actually. Wow. Worldwide. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. You know. Uh, I'm going to step back and think, okay, the foundation is clearly about governance. So make sure the right projects and that the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed for legal and licensing and all that sort of thing. But I appreciate this education angle because I do think we're getting a lot of new .NET developers 
that are looking at .NET differently and uh, and need to get up to speed on what it can do for them. Yeah, you know, up till now we've had kind of some different camps. We've had the the old hands that have been, you know, that like are on Twitter and at MVP Summit and are running these these uh, open source projects. And then we've got also new people that are coming in, uh, partly because .NET is cross-platform and open source. We've got students that are new to the platform and, and you know, just getting started. And we also have this kind of untapped, uh, you know, deep expertise bank, uh, like people working in corporate, uh, you know, the enterprise developers. Right. And when I go to some conferences, there are people that, you know, I, you, you don't, you never know, you sit down and you have lunch with them and they're brilliant and they've, you know, written tons of code, but like, they're just not, it's a separate bubble, you know? Right. And so this whole education thing too, I, I don't know exactly what the ways are to, to solve this, but I've, I've talked to some meetup leaders and they say, Hey, you know, we've got tons of people showing up and speaking locally at our meetup. You've never heard of them and they're brilliant, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> and so, so yeah, I do feel like part of what I'd love to see .NET fan- Foundation do more is swirl that all together. Get the, get the, uh, you know, the, the brilliant people that are working in enterprise, get them involved in .NET open source, uh, get the open source project leaders mentoring these students, you know, like just yeah. get, like get us all working together in more productive ways. I mean, I think it's also a journey for not just, you know, us within Microsoft and the community itself, but like our customers really have, we, we, let's face it. We, we created a really successful closed source ecosystem for 15 years, right? Mm-hmm. Or, okay, for, for 12 years, right? And then, you know, it's, we've like, we've gone, like literally an avalanche has happened and we're fully open source and it's only been like four years, right? So I think that we're our customers at first, you know, like they, it's, it's hard. We have a lot of enterprise customers and they've been very happy with Microsoft products and it was a closed source ecosystem. So we kind of trained them that way. Um, you know, it's, it's been a journey for us internally, but I think you, when I started to talk to customers and I'm starting to get more of an co- open conversation where they are using other open source software and, at their companies now. And that, that is definitely, I've seen that change over the last four years with just our own customers. And so I think that we're finally at a place now where, um, you know, most of them are very comfortable with it and they feel like the, the platform is very heavily still backed by Microsoft. So they still feel safe at the same time time they see that you know the order in order to really survive these days um it's it's about not just one company like john saying it's about it's about everybody pitching in and making an effort to to forward an ecosystem and a platform together i mean there's there's going to be so many so much opportunity i think and you know it's hard to say like Hey, as a board of director, I'm going to do this right now. I think a lot of it is going to have to do with, you know, listening. It's going to have a lot to do with who else is going to be on the board, um, who's mm-hmm. running, um, you know, who's, who's our members, you know, so, mm-hmm. um, I think, you know, that's, it's definitely going to be a, a work in progress, but let's face it, we can now scale. Yeah. Um, and that really is like mm-hmm. what we're very excited about right now is that we, you know, I just want to say like, John, like kudos to you to get this vision that Martin had planned, like to like fruition. Cause it's like been a long journey I know for you. It was, yeah, it was, you know, it was, it was very, very worthwhile. Yeah. Yeah. Very worthwhile. And, and Beth and I talking this over, like we knew this had to happen um, we've, we have both been pushing for this for a while. Um, and a lot of it's people were generally supportive, but you know, all the legal like things have to be agreed on all the, you know, what exactly the model is. There's so many different ways that this could have happened. And then, you know, talking to the companies, um, to s- support us as launch partners and stuff. So r- really like when it actually was finally being announced, like Beth and I were like, is this really happening? You know? <laughs> So, and one thing too, I I didn't say clearly earlier, um, but, you know, Beth mentioned talking about what the board members will do. And that's an exciting thing we're announcing is that uh, Beth is going to be Microsoft's uh, appointed uh, member of the board of directors. Yeah. Congratulations. I'm honored. And excited. Woo. I'm very honored and excited. Woo, woo, woo. Actually, it was uh, I was like, why me, right? Yeah, what'd you do wrong? Because it does sound like it's a set of obligations, too. Yeah. You're going to mm. be 
obviously taking on a project or two and a certain number of meetings, is it is it a quarterly or a monthly? Like how often does the foundation talk to each other? Yeah. So, I mean, we, we have a lot of different things. We have an advisory council. We have a technical steering group, um, or so which is now the um, the uh, corporate sponsors. So those both meet once a month. And then the board of directors is, uh, we're kind of making it, 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 it will meet more often now because it's, it's going to, we're moving to like an active board. So the board is actually going to be like running committees and doing things. So I would anticipate meeting at least once a month. Right. You modeled this structure after the Gnome Foundation and the F Sharp Foundation. How did that happen? Yeah. Well, so Miguel, Miguel de Acasa is on the board of directors and has, has kind of, you know, helped shape he, it, uh, a lot of stuff with .NET Foundation. Um, and he was previously part of GNOME Foundation. He was, um, he was on the board back in the early 2000s. Um, so as we looked at a lot of different foundations, that really was one where, you know, like I was saying, there's different ways you can take things. And, you know, I, I hash things back and forth with Miguel. Miguel is a lot of fun to argue with. Oh, and yeah. um, I always learn stuff <laughs> when I, when I talk to him, but it, you know, it just came from a lot of like, Hey, what do we want to be? And, mm. um, and there really is kind of a thing. Uh, I kind of, the, the easy, this was not the easiest model to agree on. No, um, it's the best one, but it wasn't the easiest one to kind of say like, okay, this is, you know, like it's just to explain to people what we're doing or why we're doing it. Um, I think Miguel's big advantage is that he's like Gnome Foundation has been around a long time. So this is not, mm. it's not that he has this grand vision or anything. He's just already had his butt handed to him. Yeah. Like, yeah. He went, th- you know, I'd have, I've spoke to him for, for ages around the book and I just realized like he really has been through the meat grinder. When he comes at you with a thought, it's probably from experience. Mm-hmm. Yep. And he's always yeah. upbeat and fun to talk to. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Always impassioned, that guy. Yeah. I have learned so many things just sitting down with him at uh, speaker parties or whatever, and he takes out his laptop and it's like, hey, let me show you what I'm working on. It's just like, <laughs> wow, I just can't believe that I'm sitting here watching this. Yeah. With that guy. Yeah. yeah I'm I'm, hope- I'm hoping he runs for the board because I, always, I still have a lot to learn. You know, and I'm pretty sure he'll get voted in. So the just John, we should mention that like for each each like there's um there's a rule on the board. Basically, you can only have two people from the same company be on the board. Mm-hmm. So ev- even with the election, so I, we already have one that's me. So one more seat, somebody at Microsoft could could win. So I'm hoping that it would be Miguel, but we'll see. And and just to be clear here, John, you're still going to be executive director and you are not on the board. I'm not on the board. That's right. So, yeah, people people are always like, oh, yeah, you run the .NET Foundation. And really, the executive director works for the board. Right. So, yeah. So, I'm, I'm the executive director working for the board. Um, and, the, uh, yeah, so. Um, Finally, I have somebody yeah, working so we'll, for me. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I kind of already do. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you know, part of, part of this and part of why we wanted to talk to you about this and and at this time, you know, be start the year with you is because we'd love for people to join the .NET Foundation. Um, uh, joining .NET Foundation as a member is, um, you know, you're you're eligible if you've contributed to .NET, and that can be as simple as contributing to the docs, you know, go out to the docs, um, click the edit button and make some, some, um, contributions and then let us know on .NET foundation.org and, you know, apply to become a member. Um, we'd love to see like looking at F sharp foundation, GNOME foundation, you know, they've got hundreds or thousands of members. Um, and you know, we'd love to see that level of membership in .NET foundation. But, but talk to me about your sort of typical member. Is it going to be a, of someone who's leading a project? Like I'm thinking about Carl with the Poly project, probably as an example. Well, I would love to see anyone that's leading open source projects joining. Right. But I would also love to see somebody that's been programming in .NET for three years and just cares about .NET. Right. Right. You know? Yeah. I mean, a contribution doesn't have to be a code contribution. Right. It could be a docs contribution. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it could be discussions, could be right. design things. You know, I mean, there's a lot of things happening in our repos that are valuable besides writing code too. Yep. Yep. So, and then, so that is one thing I'm hoping 
people listening to this will will go take a look. Go to .netfoundation.org. We'll have um, links on there where you can, you know, apply to become a member. It's already live now. We've already had since we announced, you know, we've had a lot of applications. Um, mm -hmm. I would love to see more. And then also in in the month of January, we're running elections. So we're going to be kicking off the election process. And uh, I this again, this is something where I would love to see, we need seven board members and we would love to see um, community leaders, you know, people that are passionate about .NET jump in and drive this forward. Awesome. Be my and boss. Twitter, your Twitter handle is uh, at D-O-T-N-E-T-F-D-N, just for people who just want That's to go correct. look on Twitter. Yeah. I mean, and just like, just to kind of reiterate what we've been all been talking about. I mean, like, you know, as a .NET developer, maybe, you know, you have a family or nine to five developer and you just work in an enterprise and you like your job fine and you, right, you're just kind of doing your thing. Why does this, what does this really mean? You're really not thinking about software foundations. Maybe that doesn't seem that important to you, but you know, your livelihood is, and the fact that you're, you know, building on .NET, it's important that the platform, you know, is, is there for you. So I think that as a, just a developer, just, get away from all the, you know, not understanding any legal licensing or foundations. It, it's really important that your platform is there, right? Mm. And you should care and you should, you should get involved, right? Even yeah. at the smallest level, right? If you want a sticker, yep. then that's enough to be involved to like make a comment on a discussion or, you know, help a doc out. You know what I mean? Follow them on Twitter and retweet, you know, if you've got yeah, some good I mean, followers, you know, that's an I mean, easy thing to do. It's an easy thing to do. It's an easy thing to do. If you if you care if you care about your if you care about .net if you care about your livelihood, um, then I think you would we'd want to care about the foundation. Mm -hmm. Guys, is there anything else that you want to uh, mention before we wrap up this amazing discussion? First of the year, uh, join the foundation. That's my big thing. Yeah. So I mean, there's the, as Beth said, join as a member, uh, run for a board seat, and then if if you're part of a company and that's including even down to a small company and you care about .NET, you know, get in touch with us again at the .NET Foundation .org website has links or uh, via um, via Twitter, or whatever. You know how to find us and and um, and let us know. We'd love to have the more the merrier. Awesome. Yes, please. I want to have some awesome people on this board that I get to work with. Very cool. Well, guys, thank you very much. It's been great. And uh, Happy New Year to you and your families. Happy New Year. Thank you. All right. We'll see you next time on .NET Rocks. .NET Rocks is brought to you by Franklin's Net and produced by Pwop Studios, a full-service audio, video, and post-production facility located physically in New London, Connecticut, and of course in the cloud. Online at pwop.com. Visit our website at dotnetrocks.com for RSS feeds, downloads, mobile apps, comments, and access to the full archives going back to show number one recorded in September 2002. And make sure you check out our sponsors. They keep us in business. Now go write some code. See you next time. Got a